they sort of have these little uh, daisy flowers on them, and they have some of the, what is it called, script in them. So, the script is on there, and they're like the daisy flowers. There's two of them. And then I'm going to use this one as well, because I think this is a little bit more of a bigger sort of, um, like, statement vine, if you know what I mean. And this one is item number 552664, and it's a Breton vine in parchment. But look at how pretty this one is. Do you guys think this one is pretty? I love this one. And also, lastly, which um, is this package of flowers here, these are the uh, Meredith Collection in Myrrh, and it's 552091, and you get three different flowers in there, but I think those three flowers on a headband would be so pretty, just clustered in there, so I think this one will make a really fun sort of vintage brown toned one, sort of um, autumn-y fall, not really, you could wear it anytime, but if you know what I mean by that, and then we're going to use a little bit of the lace as well from over in this set. We'll have plenty of it since it's on this roll. And just some of the additional items we're going to be using for tonight. So we are going to be using just some gesso. And this is the <laughs> studio gesso I've always used. And um, this is a studio gesso in white. And then I have, I'm going to be using some of these scissors here. And a paintbrush for the gesso. And where's my adhesive? Adhesive, oh here it is. The Beacons 3-in-1 adhesive. Uh, some of this diamond dust. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this, but I just grabbed it. Have you guys ever used this stuff? It's really awesome. It's diamond dust by Twinklets. I think that's what it's called. I got it at Michael's, but it's like a super grainy, glassy glitter. And I think it would add a really pretty, sparkly touch to the uh, pieces. So we might use some of that. Just thought I'd grab it in case. But we are going to get started. And so we're going to start off with the three vines here. And I'm just going to open them all, and we're going to lay them down on our surface. I love Prima Vines. Yeah, diamond dust on ornaments would be awesome. Do you guys have any questions on what we're doing so far? Hope I'm explaining everything okay. So here are our three vines, and as you can see, the vines actually have this little coiled end on them. I'm going to pull it open. So it is literally straight like this because we want it to be a wire because we're going to use it to wrap and then this little end piece which is also coiled a bit you're just going to pull it straight as well and just straighten it out. So on all your vines you're going to do that so it has these little wire ends on them. So it's sort of like wire and then a cluster of flowers and leaves and then wire. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one as well. Just like that. And lastly, this one down here. So you're going to have these three finds like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start creating the headband. And it's actually super duper simple, you guys. So we're going to start connecting the vines. And one of these wires is thicker. Can you see how this wire is much thicker than this one? Does that make sense? This one down here is quite a bit thicker than this one up here. This one's a little bit daintier. So you're going to connect them to where the, um, to where the wire actually go, goes onto the next one. And I hope that didn't shake the camera. I'm just making sure I'm doing this right because I don't want to do it wrong. So this one's going to be connected onto here to this one like this. And all you're going to do is you're going to take your little wire here and you're going to wrap it just like you're wrapping it around the vine. So you're going to wrap it around like that all the way around. You're going to want to wrap the whole thing. And it's going to look super organic because it's like you're literally wrapping a vine on top of a vine. So it's not going to look at all like awkward or anything. And you could even cluster it up a little bit more because we're also going to take this little backing little vine piece, which is this wire here, and you're just going to wrap that one as well. Does this make sense, you guys? You're basically going to wire your vines together. Just like that and the wire can overlap it gives it that organic look so the wires can overlap and then you're going to have your vines wired together see how they're wired on the back the little coiling around them and then you're going to do one more just like this by placing 
your vines back to back and making sure that it looks like an even flowing vine so there's no gaps in it in it and you're just gonna lay it on top can you guys hear that did that bring the sound back i hope it did Okay, awesome, you guys. Sorry about that. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. Luckily, Carrie texted me. Um, so, do you see how I wrap this loop here? Then I'm going to take this excess and just basically wrap, wrap it all the way around underneath. So I'm going to go all the way around underneath. And you're going to have this loop. So there's a loop on the end, and it's going to be super secure. And then on this end, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to wrap a loop. And you're just going to basically twist your wire around. So there's this loop that I created. And I'm just going to twist my wire down the, the vine so that my loop will stay super secure. And you could even twist your loop a little bit to make sure that your wire is extremely tight and it's not going to bend or anything. And there's this loop here. So you're going to have a loop at this end and a loop on this end. Does that make sense, everybody? Hope it does. You haven't missed much, you guys, because we're going to do it again also. So I'm sure you'll get it in. Get that in there. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to do a little bit of painting. So I'm going to grab my gesso. This is the white um, Studio Claudine Helmuth gesso. And I'm going to open it up. I love gesso. I think you all know that. And I'm going to take a little bit of it and just put it in my lid. Mm -hmm. So a little bit in the lid. And I'm just going to literally start applying it to these flowers. I want to just soften up the flowers a bit. So I'm going to apply a little bit of white gesso. And I'm not sure if you can tell the difference in the flowers. See how that one's a little bit whiter compared to the other ones? I just like that look a little bit more. So I'm going to go into each of the flowers and just literally splotch them with some gesso right on the inside because I want them to be a little bit white and a little bit more brighter for because I want to do these like summery sort of a theme. So it's sort of vintage, but the vintage uh, ones are going to work perfect for our next headband that we do. So here we go. I'm going to do this one as well. I just sort of like tap on top like I am. What is that word called? Carrie said she got kicked. Stippling. Stippling. So then I'm going to just go all the way down. Just add on our gesso. Basically stippling it on, and then I'm going to really rub it into some of the petals because I want the flowers to be a little bit more white. There we go. And then to some of these flowers, we're going to do the diamond dusting. So here's the twinklets, the diamond dust. And I'm going to open it. And I actually didn't even do these last ones. I'm going to take the gesso a little bit again. And I'm going to tip the edges, but I actually need to completely coat this one. I didn't cover this one with the gesso. But you're basically going to take it, apply it to your flowers, the gesso. The gesso is going to act as our glue in a way. And I'm going to lay it over the top. And then I need something to sort of scoop it onto. But I don't have a little scooper. Hmm, what can I use? What can I use to scoop with? Oh well, I'll just use my fingers, but I feel like that's a bad idea. And I'm just going to sprinkle it on top of those, on top of the flowers, and I'm going to tap off the excess. And I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, but there's like like these crystally glass pieces on the flowers. Do you see those? How they're just reflecting?
I will wash my hands, you guys. Trust me. I will. And then I'm going to take a little bit more gesso and just a little, adding a little bit, add them a, a little bit on them at a time. And then I'm going to shake it on, tap the excess off, shake it on, tap the excess off. I do know it can cut me, but I'm just going to do it anyways. going to live dangerously today and use glitter in a dangerous way. Sounds funny. The glitter is going to cut me. I'm just going to tap off the excess and take a little bit more and apply it onto your flowers. Tap off the excess. So basically our um, gesso is acting as our glue. You could also, if you don't have gesso, you could use paint or you could even go ahead and use glue and just put a little bit on a surface and then use a paintbrush and apply it that way. Okay, we're the last one here, and these are looking really, really pretty. This is just a great way how to just spruce up your flowers on your little vine really simply and affordably, and it just makes your um, vine look a little bit better. So you could do this even for your just everyday scrapbooking projects if you want to just add a little bit of white paint and glitter to your vines for a page or something. But that is all I'm going to do. Yeah, and stickles. If you don't have this, you could totally use um, stickles as well. I'm going to clear off my surface a little bit. And attempt to get some of this gesso off of there. Okay, so then I'm just going to grab my heat tool and just make sure all these flowers are heated. I'm just going to run the heat tool over them. I've used my fingers in that glitter before, you guys, so it's fine. I'm going to wash them right after this anyways. And my father's calling. Hello. I'm doing a class. <laughs> um, Zara and all of them are coming over right now, just letting you know. The, is there, they're going to be downstairs. My dad's like, oh, sorry. He didn't know I was in a class right now. Yeah, he probably knows I used the glitter on my hands. He's probably going to get mad at me. Look at how pretty. Can you see the sparkles on these? Probably not. Can you see them? You can see them on my hands. So that's that. And then what we're going to want to do is start applying our flowers. So, I think we're going to go with the yellow. Do you guys want to do the yellow? Actually, we're going to do a little bit more gessoing first. I forgot about our leaves. So I'm going to take a little bit of gesso. And I'm going to literally go over the whole thing now. I'm going to go over the leaves, go over the vines. It's going to make all of the raised and embossed portions of your leaves and uh, vines and sticking out pieces just, like, really come to life. So, can you see how the embossed portions have, like, a highlight on them now? I personally just love the way that adding a little bit of gesso, I use it on literally all my projects I make using Prima, Proje Prima Flowers. 
I'll just tip them with a little bit of uh, gesso, and it just really brings out the the details. It's sort of like a really quick highlight, and it sort of adds that little shabby chic whitewashed effect if you like that look. Get it in your vines. Add it to the back of the flowers because people will be able to see the back. So just add it onto the back. Sort of avoid um, running over the top of your diamond dusted flowers because you don't want that diamond dust to come off. even apply it onto like your loop at the end and just really the whole piece. So it's going to look really whitewashy. Do you guys understand? So this is the back, as you can see, it's super green. The front is really whitewashed, but it still has that really pretty naturally green look. Can you see? lovely and I think we're gonna go ahead and use the yellow ones because I really want that sort of summery vibe and my favorite color is yellow so I think the yellow ones would be fun and the yellow ones item number is five six one four zero six and they're the interlude flowers the interlude roses look how pretty these ones are the yellow so I'm gonna try to get the vine in a majority of the screen as you can see and I'm gonna move some of these pieces that I'm not using right now. Move those out of the way. Okay, so here's our vine here. And you could you could easily, if you want to, you could go ahead and just adjust the vine a little bit, make the leaves go in the right directions, things like that. But pretty much this vine it looks pretty nice the way it looks. And what I like to do is I, I sort of separate my flowers by largest. So I'm going to grab the largest flowers and then I'm going to grab the mediums, and then I have a little section of small. So there's three large, three smalls, and then there's like six little, or three larges, which are here, three of these medium ones, and then six of these little baby ones. So that's how I'm going to distinguish which is going to go where. So I like to take these large ones, and I'm going to put them in the center. So I'm just going to plop them down wherever I want, and I'm actually going to switch this one because that one's a bright yellow, so I want that to be the focal since I have two of these off yellowy ones. Then I'm going to grab a couple more flowers and just place them on the sides. They don't have to be perfectly sitting on there, but you're going to want them to be pretty much on the, in the right direction. And I'm just going to go all the way down to the end and sort of just fade it out as I go to the end. And then I guess I'm not going to use the last one, but that would create a really pretty statement. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start gluing down my flowers. So I'm going to use my Beacons 3-in-1 adhesive. And I'm just going to... You could also use hot glue for this, but I would suggest something a little bit more stronger because as you know, hot glue can sometimes just wear off and especially for something like a headband. And I'm just going to... Add a nice glob of glue. And if you bounce your uh, glue up and down like I'm doing, it'll create air bubbles in your glue. And it will just, it'll create it. It'll make your glue so that when you just stick it down on your project, it'll literally bond right away. But it won't, it'll bond to a point where it will stick really well. So if you move it around, it's not going to fall off. But it won't, it'll bond so that you could easily take it off if you wanted to still. That's a little trick that I do all the time. And after you do that, you could easily take them off, take your flowers on and off if you need to, but they're going to stay, if that makes sense. Rather than just having like a, a liquidy pool of glue, this sort of solidifies your glue a little bit as you're working with it. And I'm going to add one here, and then I'm going to go ahead and take some glue and put it on here. You could also apply it directly to your vine if you want to. I'm just applying it to my flowers. Go. 
just literally tuck them in. And if you need to move some um, of the leaves out to make sure that your flower is going to stay still, so you could blur, you could sort of move the leaves out as little um, anchors for your flower. So you could uh, glue them down in multiple spaces if you want to sort of move a leaf out and then attach it to the vine and then attach it to the leaf itself so it stays a little bit better. You could totally do that. Make sure that's stuck down. And I want to add this one next. Have you guys been going to Starbucks happy hour? Half off, half off Frappuccinos from 3 to 5. Have any of you guys been going? I have been. Just saying. Oh, you guys don't know about it? Starbucks from 3 to 5 is half off drinks. Uh, just the Frappuccinos, though. So, if you don't like Frappuccinos, I guess you can't. But I, I've never drunk in a Frappuccino at Starbucks until they had these half off thingies. And I really like the white chocolate mocha Frappuccino, so you may want to give that a try. And I actually don't want that flower. I don't know why I grabbed it. I want to slide it on. I think all my friends are here. I feel like they are. They're, they're going to stay downstairs. Because we're going to that movie, so we're having a little before movie. I don't know what you're going to call it. Whatever. So there we go. And just flip it around a couple times. Make sure all your flowers are secure. Look at this. Do you see this? How pretty... Lovely. Doesn't it look super like expensive? Or not expensive, but it looks really looks really in depth, if you know what I mean. Really detailed. And then to add a little bit more of a cohesive element, I'm gonna grab my gesso again and just tip the tops of some of these roses. I'm just gonna do the tips of the petals. And it's really only gonna show on these darker yellow ones but I'm just going to do it to all of them. So it has a little bit of a highlight on the top of the petals. Just like that. Do you guys want me to add some crystals? Because I could totally add some crystals. I mean, they weren't planned out to originally go on this, but I'm sure I have some I could add. Such as these Satan crystals that I happen to just find, you know. I found them. I'm going to take a couple of crystals, and I'm just going to put them on here. So I'm going to add some of them to the flower tips some of them to the vine, some of them to the leaves, some of them to the, the little pop-out stamen pieces. I'm literally going to add them all over the place, so. Just little pops of bling here and there. These are in a really pretty shade. Oh, this is item number 551391. I would be adding glue too, Carrie, but I swear these little crystals, they have the strongest foam adhesive on the back I have ever used in my life. Or, no, I guess I haven't used this foam adhesive, but their adhesive on these little crystal pieces, it's awesome. So. Um, I think I'm going to add one more in here. There we go. Can you see our little pops of crystal? Look at our little crystally pops. Isn't this pretty, you guys? This is literally super pretty. I swear. I love this one. These ones are so much fun. You could have so much fun creating different ones, and especially adding unique thingies. Like, you could even add things like these. 
are the little, what are these things called? These are the little Prima Teos uh, pieces, but like, how pretty would those be in there? You could do so many fun things with these pieces. Yeah, and it would definitely be $50 in a floral shop, and a floral, sh floral, floral shop would use real flowers, which wouldn't last, so you could not reuse something like this, and, or if they created it with real flowers, you could not reuse it, and I think that using these Prima flowers, it's like, seriously, just as much detail as a real flower headband. Just gonna say, you guys. And then, with the trim, just grab a little bit of trim off of here and you can just go ahead and at the loops we created on the ends those are where you're going to attach your trim so I just take a little bit of trim um, I just take a little bit of trim and I'm going to tie a knot right here with the trim wrap it around and I'm going to pull both strands through or I'm going to attempt to pull both strands through. See how I'm doing this? I'm going to take it, put them together, and then I'm going to wrap it over and pull it through. Like that. And you're just going to pull it pretty tight. Pull it so it goes all the way down to the core. And you're just going to snip your excess little, since you're going to have a little extra piece of lace on there, I just snip it all the way down to that knot. So you're going to have this little strand of lace, which is perfect for a closure. And it adds a little delicate touch to it. Should I have my friend Zura come up at the end and model these for you guys? Because she so would. She'd love to. She's downstairs. Doing her homework. And I'm just pulling the end again, and I'm going to cut it all the way down at the core. And there we go. We basically have our flower headband finished. And I would personally let this dry a little bit longer, and then I'd start to form it. So you're going to shape it by wrapping it around something. And all I did was I literally wrapped it around my head. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. I'm just going to wrap it, the flower crown, around my head. And I'm going to tie it tightly in the back so it's secure. And then I'm going to take it off my head, and it's going to have a little bit of a form. Yeah, and you can even add felt to the back, but it's really not, like, punctury or anything. And this is going to look, it looks sort of oblong right now, but as it shapes, it'll definitely shape out a little bit. And see this, how it's popping up right here? You see how this is popping out? All you have to do is take it and add a little bit of glue to the back of some of these areas and just attach them back to the the main vine piece. So like this over here is a little bit popping off. So I'm going to take some glue and apply it back to the main vine. And same thing with this side here. Just going to make sure that your your flowers all stay in place as you want them to. And this one actually sort of fell. So I'm going to hold it in place a little bit. You could definitely go back and just add um, a couple more securing strands of glue in there if you want to. Sort of form it to a circular shape. And some of these little sprigs that pop out a little bit too much, just like what I said, Add a little bit of glue on the other underside, and then just fasten them to the main little strand. Just hold it for a couple seconds. And lastly, I'm going to do that. 
It's in here. As you can see, guys, I've been filming for 30 minutes, and about 10 minutes of that was probably talking to you guys and discussing products. I made this thing in 20 minutes, and it literally looks awesome. This thing looks awesome. Let's readjust the flowers a little bit, sort of crunch them, or put them a little bit together. I'm going to bring down some of these vines. They're not super poking out. Look at it. Look how pretty, you guys. I swear, this looks super, super expensive. Doesn't that look nice? I feel as if I should point the camera up super quick and show you. Should I? Probably so. Ooh, look how nice! Let's fix a couple of the little vines. That's what it looks like. So there is one, and I'm going to point the camera back down for you guys because we're going to be doing the other one right now. Point the camera down. Okay, let's get started. So the next one, we're going to use these products. These are um, two of the same vines, which again are the button vines in Nature Garden and then this Breton vine in Parchment. I'm going to be using these two and this one. And so I'm going to undo them from their packaging. And we're going to do the same thing that we did last time, where we uh, basically pulled our ending wire strand out, and then we straightened out this coiled up end. And we're going to be using the Meredith flowers in the color Mer, M-E-R. They're the brown ones. I'm going to have all three, and, oh, I'm definitely going to add the butterfly, you guys, like, no doubt about it, I'm going to add it, so, uh, as you can see, I'm going to lay this one on top, I want this one to be my, my middle piece, because I'm going to have two on the edges that are the same, so I'm going to lay this on top to where it simply um, blends in, and I'm going to wrap it around the vine, the wire makes it so easy, because, like, you would be doing this with jewelry wire if you were creating this like with a fresh floral as in any way so does not even matter and if you want to because as you can see like this is a really long little strand here that you would attach you could also just uh, reinforce this top section and then attach it about halfway down so that's actually probably even a better idea to do with these is to add it so there's like two wires because as you can see it sort of starts off thick and then it goes thicker at the base and then it goes thinner towards the top so if you want to re and reinforce that thinner area from where we attached it you totally can and you're just going to wrap this little vine right around it and it looks as if it was meant to be wrapped anyways because of the little wrapped coils in the vines in the first place like these little coily pieces, they look like they're supposed to be in there. And then we're going to add one last vine down here. And I'm going to make sure that it looks like it's blended in pretty well. Then I'm going to wrap it with my little end strand. Super simple. If you guys, it may seem hard on the video, like it looks sort of weird on the video, but it's really super complicated. I mean, I just said it was super complicated. It's super, super easy nothing complicated about this. And I'm going to pull up this little section here so I can wrap my vine mm -hmm. around this section. And I don't think I'm going to um, add the diamond dust to this one because I want it to be a little bit more vintage-y. So I don't want the super shimmery sparkles on it. So here we have this one, and this one flipped around. Sometimes they do that. You could just twist them back, right back to, into place. So as you can see, there's two different vines on either edge, or you probably can't see. Mm, and here's a couple more. 
There's two different vines. There's a green vine, a green vine, and then there's the parchment vine in the middle. See how that works? So you could mix and match your vines. If you don't have three of the same vines, totally mix them up. Like, it doesn't even matter. Because we're going to make these all look cohesive anyways by using our gesso again. So gesso, and I'm going to start at the end here, and I'm just going to go ahead and just give a little coating to the whole floral piece. And this one, the parchment vine, it has these little berries on them, which I really, really like. There's like these little small berries, if you can see them. Ooh, yeah, carry a gold or silver paint to add a little metallic touch to it. That'd be really pretty. In fact, I think I might even like that idea. We might have to go in with a little bit of gold paint after I do the white. I would always suggest adding a little bit of white. Even if you're going to do another color to tip the edges, add a little white. It will show under your gold, and it will make your gold um, highlights. If you're going to paint over the top, paint it first white, then paint your color on it, because it's going to be basically priming your surface. And then any areas where the white is going to show, it's just going to act as a highlight anyways for the color that you added, for the color that you're adding. But I really like the idea of the gold. So I think I might have to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the gesso back. That's all we're going to be using the gesso for, I think. We might use it again. And I'm going to heat this. Oh, prom, you guys. Prom was good. Uh, we actually only got one picture there. It was really crazy. Um, I thought I was going to be able to take a lot more photos, and I'll actually upload the photo, but I didn't even get it on my phone because my phone died there. So I have to get it from the person I went with. But I'm definitely going to post them on Instagram like I promised for you guys. I promised my last show, if you weren't here, that I would post all the photos from prom on Instagram, but I only got one. But I actually have a ton of photos from, because I went to two proms, if you didn't know that. I actually went to my senior prom at my my own high school, and then I went to my friend's junior prom at her high school, because I used to go to that high school for 10th and 11th, so I went with her there. But it was super fun. I really liked it. Yes, I could totally put it in the frame I made. Oh, you guys like my Outfit of the Day posts? I've been posting these Outfit of the Days. I actually have another one. Do you guys want to sneak at it? I could totally show you. I have another one that I'm going to be posting today. I don't know if you can even see this, but, like, here's an Outfit of the Day post. You probably can't see that, but there's a little sneak. It was what I'm wearing today anyways, so... I've been posting on Instagram my OOTDs, as they're called. Where's the paint? Where's my paint? Here's my gold paint right here. I'm using Craft Smarts Metallic Gold. I just have a little bit of packaging. And a, a bit of metallic gold paint. You don't need much. And I'm actually just going to go in with my white brush. Like I don't even want to dry it. I'm just going to brush off the excess white. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the gold and just go in and tip mm -hmm. the flowers with the gold. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Remember how, if you guys were at the last class, you would remember um, that I left, like, my the prom started at 6, and I had my show at 4, and it went to 5, and the prom was an hour away. So I, I literally got there on time, like, perfectly on time. It's when they just started checking people in, and it was crazy. I've never driven, like, I just got my license, if you didn't know that. I've never driven um, to this place, so I was sort of scared, but, oh well. I was singing extremely loud, because there were some really good songs on the radio, so I guess I wasn't that scared if I was singing. I'm just going to brush this on. It gives it sort of that antique look. You also spray it with a glimmer mist if you want it to just pop while it's outside. That might be pretty. I'm going to do it all the way across on all of this. There we go. And then, you, and then I was like, oh, well... I guess I'll just do one last little project with you guys, and you're all like, No, you need to go right now! And I was like, uh, I want to do a project. You wouldn't let me. 
so I didn't. And I actually forgot to do the little end pieces. So the ends, again, you're just going to wrap it in a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be attaching trim to it. So there's a little loop here. And you're just going to attach or wrap the excess around. Sort of like if you're wrapping a head pin, if any of you guys do jewelry making or anything. It's the same exact concept. And then I'm going to do this bottom one here. It's going to be a little bit thicker, but oh well. Wrap this all the way around. Like that. So you're going to have two little loops on either end. I'm going to grab some white paper. There. Is that better? Can you guys see that better? I feel like that's so much better. Like, super bright. And I'm going to also add the lace on the ends. So I'm going to do that right now just because I want to. Just because I feel as if I should. Ooh, maybe I should add a little bit of lace on the inside. I think I'm going to. So I'll do that last. Or after I add the lace to these. I'm just going to tie it like this. You can't even tell that it, it was in, it, that it wasn't tied like how I did before. And that was so much faster. And then I'm going to go on to this side. And I just do a random amount of lace because I personally like the big sort of um, bows on the back of them. I think the bow adds a nice touch. Like if it was a completed headband, if like if you wanted to add four vines and make it literally a complete a hundred a hundred percent all the way around headband, if you know what I mean, where there's no vine, just like a orbital sort of a thing, it'd look great. But I think the bow just adds a little bit of a fun touch to it. And I'm also going to add some lace. So I'm going to cut a pretty long strip of it, and I think I'm just going to apply it in the inside. So I'm going to add a little bit of glue right to the back side of my vine. So here's the back side. I'm going to add a little bit and I'm going to just place my lace back here. And I'm just going to literally go in this vine and just wrap my lace in it throughout it. So if there's no specific way I'm doing this, I'm just wrapping the lace in it. If it looks pretty, awesome. I just like, I want to add a little bit of lace to it. And I think it's just going to add that little bit of a vintage -y touch. And this seriously looks incredible right now. And I'm excited to see the outcome because I haven't done anything else but the pink one I showed you, and I am hooked. I'm going to do so many more of these. I'm placing an order, carry for more vines because I'm addicted, and I'm probably going to do something crazy and create a crazy headband. These are so fun. Oh yeah, you guys, like, you see me on here, and I look really, like, outgoing. Oh, when you see me in person, I'm the shyest person in the world. It is crazy. Like, I don't want to talk to you. I mean, I not as in, like, I don't want to talk to you, but as in, like, it seems like I don't want to talk to you because I don't know what to say. Look at the little lace throughout there. Isn't that gorge? Do you like that? And then we're going to use these myrrh flowers. And we are just going to plop these on. And these are going to be sort of our accents, our large accent pieces. I think I want like them literally like this, sort of in the center. Does that look good? I feel like it would. And that was one pack of flowers. There's so many details in these flowers, you guys. I swear. It's like insane. Make sure to add a good amount of glue. Do the back side and just plop it right on. These are perfect for weddings, for just like your outfits. They really add a really great touch to your outfits. Um, I don't know what else you could do them for. Birthday parties, 
any sort of party, I guess, you could use them for. I'm just going to wrap it around. We are covering some of the flowers, but that's fine. Put that one right in the center. Let it sort of mold. Or go on there like that. And I think that's about done. I'm going to pull some of these little vines out of here to get the moving the movement a little bit more flowing since I did wrap some lace in there. Sort of covered up some of our flowing elements. And I seriously love this. This is awesome. And we made this in like 16 minutes. And I'm going to put it on my head and form it. Oh my gosh, you guys. This one looks freaking cool. I'm not going to lie. I seriously love this one. Look it. Can you see this one? Like, it looks crazy on me. I'm going to bring my friend up Zura, but my friend Zura up. But this one is super pretty. Look it. These things are seriously addicting. I love these. These are frogging gold. Should I bring Zara up right now? Should I call her and be like, Zara, we need you to model these headbands. Okay, I'll bring her up. This is like my best friend, everyone, just saying. Mm, okay. Let's call. You guys cannot see my phone case because it has a cuss word on it that I'm not proud of. Well, I bought it, so... I don't know. Uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, hi, Zara. Um, we, yeah, all the people... Um, Zara, you need to come upstairs because all the people in the chat want to see you wearing these headbands. Okay, come fast. She's like, oh, okay, I'm coming! And threw her phone because it went off. No, she's not shy. You'll see. Okay, I'm going to point the camera up so we can stand. Uh, you can close the door. Zara, come on! I just told them all you weren't shy. Come in this camera frame. This is Zara! Her name's Zara. I'm just saying. It's sort of a hard name to remember or pronounce, I guess. Here are the crowns. Look at Zara, I made you one. Aww. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now look over here. Oh, that doesn't look good. Oh, wait, how did you wear it before? They're all calling you beauties. No, it's it's like this, you guys. Next one? This is the next one. It's yellow. Ooh, pretty. Next one? And this is the last one. This one's look crazy. You gotta that one more. <laughs> oh, yeah. It has lace on it. I think that one's literally my favorite one. Look at how oh, good it looks one. in this camera. It looks so good. Oh, they want to see the back. See, look. Doesn't the lace look good? Or, well, I mean, like a little bow on it. Okay. Okay. All done. I'll be down there in like five minutes. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was Zara. You guys probably saw her in my video that I did. I did a video earlier. Because I was doing her photos today. I thought she'd model them much better than I could. And I feel like as if she probably did. 
I posted a video just telling you, talking about the class. She goes, I'm seriously in love. I just made three awesome flower crowns. And this one is so pretty. I love it. I just love the big details right in the front. I think they look awesome. So that was my video, and I'm probably going to have a seriously ton. I'm going to have a ton of these made, and I'm going to post pictures on my blogs, and I want to see what you guys create with them also. So if you post them, mm -hmm. post them to your Instagram, or um, post them to your, to your um, Facebook, tag me in them. I want to see. And also, you guys, I just wanted to uh, talk to you guys about the art venture that is on January 8th and 9th. Um, it's a really, it's really awesome. I wish I was able to go to the last one, but I wasn't. And it's just literally like a, I think it's a weekend. I'm not sure. A weekend of classes and it's with a ton of different Prima instructors and educators and things. So really cool. It, again, it's, um, on January 8th and 9th. You may want to look into it. It's 2014, of course, since we did past January already. And, um... Also, I wanted to talk about the next class, which is next Tuesday with Frank, and it is at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's for any of you international um, people or uh, anything like that. You could totally uh, tune in on these videos. And again, they're all recorded, so if you miss them, you could totally go back and watch them. And just email one of us instructors if you have any questions. I'm sure all of us will get back to you. I know I personally will get back to you, so I could tell you that, but... I think that's all you guys I wanted to talk about. And uh, Carrie posted the link where you can register. It's in, Al it's in Anaheim, California near Disneyland. Okay, you guys, I think that's all. I actually have to get going. Um, we're going to go, uh, even though it's 7.30, we're going to go off. The movie starts at, I think, 10.45. We have to drive an hour and a half away to get to the close to movie theater because I live in the middle of nowhere. Gosh, hate living in the middle of nowhere. So, whatever. And again, uh, uh, Frank's class next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 6 p.m. What's GMT, Carrie? Is that globe? Something Mountain Time? 6 p.m.? I should know that, but I don't. Oh, it's European time. That's probably why I don't know it. Thank you guys so much again for watching, and don't forget to pick up some vines from Prima or your local distributors. Pick up a couple of flowers, make your own flowers, whatever you want to do. Just uh, create some flower headbands, and I think they're super fun, and they're great for the upcoming season. So I will catch you all next time. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.